Once again, we have another week of horrific television with Velma, showing us all of the worst character flaws a person could possibly have. She is selfish, vile, racist, and just filled to the brim with penis envy. And if I had to pick a line that would sum Velma up perfectly, it would be this. My fault? Nothing is ever my fault! You're a monster! Because Velma has the mind of a child, an angry child with a personality disorder, but still a child. As having zero accountability for her own actions is the most defining trait of Velma as a character. Once again, Velma continues to be a terribly written, unfunny waste of time that just won't fuck off into obscurity. You've got to wonder what goes on at HBO for them to greenlight this trash, because it's a complete mystery to me, and the only guesses I can think of is that Mindy Calling was sucking off an executive at Warner Brothers for the show, or she has dirt on one of the people working at Warner Brothers at one of those eyes wide shut parties they all go to. So this week, we have episode 7 and 8. Episode 7 is all about penis envy, with Velma dressing up like a man and making stupid comments like this. Wait a second. As a guy, everyone thinks my worst qualities as a girl are awesome. No wonder men are so desperate to hold onto their power. This is the easiest shit ever. Whereas episode 8 is supposed to be about the actual mystery of the show, but it's just a bunch of contrived nonsense happening one after another for most of the episodes, which goes to show how incapable these writers are at their jobs, and explains why they had to make this show as controversial as possible, because it's dumb as fuck and nobody would watch it otherwise. Now let's dive into the mess they call a plot. Episode 7 starts with Velma trying to find out what Jinkies means, and we can see that she is ignoring Daphne because she has better things going on, like all good friends would do. Velma's parents tell her that they are going to Fogfest, which is a party by the pier, and Velma is annoyed because everybody is going out when they should be inside due to the curfew. What? Can you believe that Velma has the audacity to call everybody selfish for not wanting to be locked down when she herself stole a police car and broke curfew to steal some food from a bin? This fucking bitch, man. Her dad tells her that curfew has been lifted, and the reason why is because they believe the murderer is a ghost. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. Even if this was the case, which is just stupid, there are still three dead girls out there with no brains, and now some entity is killing them. So why would anybody go out to party? In fact, you would be leaving town, as there is no way to get rid of a ghost. But fuck that, nobody in this town acts like a normal human being, and this plot needs a festival to happen. So all of these people just ignore the murderer and go out. Now, Fogfest requires women to bring a date with them. So Fogfest is not only dangerous, it's sexist too. It's funny how she pretends to be angry about it for being sexist, when in reality she is angry because she knows that she is too ugly to obtain a date to go. Ironic. We cut to Fred's house and his parents don't want him to go out with Velma as she is a cave troll and they need him to win Fog King for their image. And yes, this is all just time wasting for the episodes as the show needs to give Fred something to do. In school, for some bizarre reason, Gigi still wants to go out with Shaggy. I do not know what she could possibly see in him. He is a weak, pathetic man that simps for another woman. All this shows is that there's something wrong with Gigi, as no normal woman would put up with Shaggy and dump him immediately. So because Shaggy is taking Gigi to the Fog Festival, Velma begins to chastise him. My anger is rooted solely in this town's selfish desire to party instead of stay inside and stop a serial killer. You fucking hypocrite. You convinced Shaggy to commit Grand Theft Auto of a police car to get some food for you. Just how much of a selfish, dumb narcissist must you be to lack any self-awareness? She's a stupid bitch who thinks the universe revolves around her. So after lecturing everybody about going to the Fog Fest, Velma Velma finally admits that she wants to go as well. But girls have to have a date to go, and my bottom of the barrel kill myself desperation date is taken. You know something? You disgust me. Just why exactly does Shaggy hang around with Velma, as she clearly despises him and only wants to use him for favours like a leech? Velma then realises that the only person who could possibly go with her is Daphne, and I find this funny because she is only speaking to Daphne now when she needs her. Daphne doesn't want to go with her because she was acting like a bitch. Fred interrupts them and uses money to try and get Daphne to go out with him because he knows that the only thing that she is interested in is money, and unsurprisingly, she agrees. She's a whore. 
Later on that night, her dad and stepmother are going to leave for the festival and are taking their newborn baby with them because they are terrible parents. I guess we can see where Velma gets her selfishness from. Even though she is staying behind, she doesn't offer to babysit for them. Instead, she tries to guilt trip them and ruin their night out. Have fun! I'll just be here alone catching the serial killer! You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> when they leave, Velma comes to the realisation that Jinkies was in her mother's manuscripts that she left at home, and when the card is held up to candlelight, it reveals a number to a phone, which she uses to call the killer. You better not make a skin suit out of my mom just because Brown don't crack. That's not funny! This show should not be classified as a comedy, and whoever wrote all of the jokes deserves a punch to the face, because it's horrendously unfunny and comes across as tryhard. So because of the noises in the background, she knows that the killer is at the festival, but because she doesn't have a date, she needs a disguise to get in, so she decides to dress as a man. At the entrance to the Fog Festival, the sheriff begins to suspect her. There's something funny about you. Not LOL funny, but more thoughtful and well-observed, like a female-driven comedy. Humor here funny in different way. It not reinforce stereotypes. Translation, boring. We also get to see Shaggy doing his best Jon Snow impression. My queen. And as he gets stuck on a ride with Gigi, he talks about how horrible it was being a sim to Velma. I know how belittling it feels to be sent a voicemail by someone you like. If you know how badly she treated you, then why are you friends with her? Well, don't expect an explanation, as this show will never give us one, as it would have to portray Velma's relationship with him as toxic, which they would never do, because deep down, the show wants simps. It's why Velma has two of them. You fat bitch. We then see Daphne, who is supposed to be on a date with Fred, but immediately tries to cheat on him and get fucked by Velma, because that's Daphne's character in a nutshell, a cock-hungry whore. You slut! Afterwards, we see Shaggy and Fred get into a pointless fight about who's going to be the Fog King, which is about as fun to watch as getting your ball smashed by a mallet. Whilst all of this is going on, Velma starts to complain about men yet again. You've clearly studied dance for years, and yet any bozo can take over a dance floor just by doing the walk. What? This isn't the own against men you think it is. What you're actually saying is that despite the years you've put in, some random drunk man can easily beat you in a dance-off. How shit must you be? As a guy, everyone thinks my worst qualities as a girl are awesome. Well, that's not true, Velma. You're an asshole, and it doesn't matter what gender you are. Nobody likes an asshole. The only reason people aren't shaming you is because nobody knows who you are and they are drunk. Believe me, if they spoke to you for more than two minutes, they would realize what a piece of shit you are. The problems you have are because of who you are, not what you look like. This also shows just how deluded Velma is and how much she suffers from penis envy because she believes believes that all of her failures come from society, and all of her problems would just go away if she had a Y chromosome, which is bullshit as her horrible personality would recreate the problems. We even see her brag about the men's toilets, which clearly Mindy has never seen the inside of one, because if she had, they are nothing to brag about. Most of them look like a bomb has gone off, and you have to step over an ocean of piss just to reach the urinal. No woman would brag about that. Mr. Cartwright. You seem to be splashing me a bit. But the show needs to try and construct a fallacy about male privilege, so it keeps grasping at straws. Now that Velma can pass herself off as a man, she believes that everybody will now listen to her. If this is supposed to be a jab at male privilege, then why are all the women listening to men as well? What? I tell you why. I don't know. Because this show believes that it can reprogram you into thinking whatever it wants. Like Fred thinking ugly women are attractive through the power of feminism. So Velma goes on to tell everybody that the murderer is not a ghost, but a serial killer. Why would this information have any relevance? All of this is just a dumb reason for Velma to be at the festival and to dress up like a man. And as a man speaking authoritatively, you are going to listen to me and you are going to believe me. I can't. Velma, have you ever wondered that the reason why nobody trusts you is not because you're a woman, but because you have been proven to be a manipulative liar that will say anything as long as it benefits you? Well, you probably haven't because you're a self-absorbed asshole. Now, because she has told everybody the obvious, they decide to make Velma the new Fog King. Also, I forgot to mention, Velma's fake name is Manny. At first, I thought it was because she was a male tranny, but now I believe it's because it sounds like Mindy, and here's why. Velma has 
become the Fog King and is praised by everybody, which is exactly what Mindy wished happened to her in high school, which was to become the prom queen, and this is her living out her fantasy through the show, because clearly it never came true and she is still bitter about it to this day. This Velma TV show is just a massive coping mechanism for Mindy. So after becoming Fog King, Velma once again complains about male privilege, because of course she does. No wonder men are so desperate to hold onto their power. This is the easiest shit ever. This entire scene is pure projection from Mindy. People get handed everything with zero effort all because of their gender. Mindy, getting hired for a job even though you are underqualified, all because you're part of a certain group. Mindy. And the most obvious is that Velma is getting paid for dog shit art that nobody likes, which is literally this show. How can these people be so unself-aware of what they are doing, and at the same time criticise people for doing the exact same things they are? It's utter madness that people this delusional get their own TV shows. So after this, she then gets a drunk Daphne all alone and tries to fuck her, but is stopped by Fred and is revealed to be a woman. So because of this, she loses the title and they instead give it to Shaggy. Why? Was there no other male available in this entire town because he is the last person who should win any award? Because he is the last person I would consider a king. He and Fred fight over the crown and chase each other around the fair in a shitty homage to the original series. How dare you stand where he stood? The audacity these people have to do this when they have destroyed everything everybody liked about the original Scooby-Doo. Velma then meets Daphne under the bridge and starts to make excuses about her behaviour. I wanted to tell you I was Manny, but as a guy, there's so little consequence for your actions. You loathsome, fat, ugly bitch! Once again, she is trying to own men, but what she is actually saying is that if she was a man, she would act like a piece of shit all of the time. All this goes to show is how disgusting of a human being Velma must be, because as we can see she abuses everybody and everything around her. If she was a politician she would execute people in the streets if she could. They are then interrupted by the serial killer as he chases them across the pier and they run into Fred and Shaggy. The killer doesn't kill them and instead leaves a phone behind, because the plot needs him to make such a dumb decision as these writers have no idea how to move the story forward in an intelligent matter. The episode ends with Fred being abducted by a serial killer and unfortunately Unfortunately, no, he does not die, and that's the end of episode 7. Well, that was fucking dreadful. Episode 8 starts off with a recap on how Velma isolated Daphne when they were younger and stopped her from having other friends. Now, normal people would call this a possessive, abusive relationship and point out that Velma is clearly mentally unstable. But no, this is progressive writing, so every horrible attribute is actually a positive. We even see her repeat the behaviour on Shaggy, because when Daphne gets attractive and Velma gets jealous, she decides to control Shaggy and stops him from making other friends as well. And Velma does this because she is a possessive sociopath who sees people as toys. And we can see in the present day she does this again by dragging Daphne away from her old friend. So because the killer left his phone behind, Velma tries to break into the phone by guessing passwords. I've tried mustache fan, I took the red pill, and van owner. Why not try insufferable bitch Velma, it suits you more. They then have a discussion on flashbacks and on how to go about them. If this was a flashback in your point of view, in order for it to be earned, we'd have to cut to Fred? What the fuck are you talking about? They do this because the show has multiple flashbacks and has zero confidence in its ability to tell them, so it decided to write this entire segment as an excuse. I like it when they use a title card with the character's name when they cut to a different flashback. And this shows a level of insecurity that this writing team has. We cut to Fred who is trapped in a room with the brains of the three women who were attacked and he begins to have an affair with all three of them. And that's it, that's all he does for most of the episode. He gets into a very boring relationship with three women. Velma and Daphne manage to break into the killer's phone very easily. <gasps> The password is 1234. And also, the picture conveniently has the most notable landmark in the entire area. That's fucking stupid. Yes, this is real. This got past an entire writing team who thought that this was good enough to show the public. And these people are paid a fortune and this is the quality they give us. Each one of them deserves to be beheaded by ISIS. So after that contrived bullshit, she tries to take Daphne to the woods. But it turns out that she has other plans with other people. And so what does Velma do? I'm having a deadly hallucination! Bago shoot your calendar! 
I'm sure I won't have another one in the woods and die all alone. You really are one of the most disgusting humans I've ever met. She fakes a potential heart attack to guilt trip Daphne into going with her, because just as I said before, she is a manipulative evil little fuck. She gets Shaggy to use his girlfriend Gigi to set up her cabin which is conveniently in the woods. Before heading to the cabin, Shaggy starts to talk about menopause to his girlfriend. Goodbye to her reproductive years, but hello to womanhood's beautiful final chapter. Does anyone else find it interesting that Mindy is getting close to that age? Just thought I'd mention it, it's probably just coincidental. Later on they head to the cabin and Gigi is annoyed that Shaggy brought Velma and Daphne as he failed to tell her that they are coming. Why she is still with him makes no sense unless she has some sort of daddy issues. Shaggy then tells Daphne that Velma lied about her hallucinations and tricked her to come onto the mountain. This causes her and Gigi to storm off but they are then stuck near the edge of a cliff. There was a cave down in that ravine so we came out to try and see if that's where the serial killer was hiding. So what exactly were the pair of you going to to do scale down the cliff no this is just a reason for them to be put in danger also isn't it convenient that Gigi's cabin just happens to be right next to where the serial killer lives now these people do the stupidest thing possible and run over to the pair of them everyone then falls down the creek and are pinned by a rock now these people are supposed to be friends and instead of cooperating and trying to find a way out, they immediately turn on each other because these are modern progressive writers. None of them are actual friends, they are just allies. They will only work together as long as it suits them, which is why when they are no longer useful, they immediately turn on each other. They fight until Shaggy gets out his beacon that alerts search and rescue because that is just something everyone has on them in case of this specific emergency. But when search and rescue arrive, they don't save them, and do you know why? Fred Jones, the son of a wealthy white family, has gone missing. All local units are being diverted to the search effective immediately. Another episode, yet another white privilege comment, because these writers are obsessed with the colour white, so much so, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to bleach their skin. These supposed friends then try to murder one another to save themselves, but another crack opens up and they all fall down again into another cavern, right next to where Fred is being held hostage. Ooh, how convenient! Now, for the first time in this show, Daphne says something that shockingly wasn't retarded. And maybe we're both too messed up to be friends. So maybe it's time we try being girlfriends. Wrong! That's wrong! That is the complete fucking opposite of what you should be doing. You don't recommend an alcoholic drink even more booze, you tell them to stop as these two should be nowhere near each other, as they bring out each other's worst qualities and are both in a codependent relationship. They don't actually like each other, they just like the attention the other person gets them. Daphne likes Velma because she feels abandoned, and her extremely possessive and controlling nature fills the abandonment issues that Daphne is having. When you actually break this down, they have a deeply disturbed relationship. That wouldn't surprise me if it ended up in a murder. So they walk into the room, and Velma tries to grab the brains but falls down yet another hole and is grabbed by her mother. Where did she come from? No clue, the show doesn't bother to explain it. She also has what will obviously become the mystery van available as well. Now this is a lot of contrived dog shit happening all at once and that's because they don't know how to write a story. So Velma's mother, who also happens to be a race car driver as well, gets them out of the cave and we have some shit dialogue as she does it. What principle of physics am I using? Centripetal force! Oh my god, who the hell cares? So after a shit driving scene, they escape the cave and end up back at the cabin. And the last scene is the news saying that Fred is safe and Velma's mother is a cleaning lady and questions her immigration status. Because this show only has one type of joke that it repeats over and over again, which is all about white privilege, which is boring as fuck. So before Velma's mother is taken to hospital, Velma talks to her and wants some answers, but it turns out that she has suddenly got amnesia and can't answer any questions, and they have only done this because they want everybody to come back next week for the finale, like anybody gives a fuck about who the killer is. And that's the end of episode 8. Worse than the day I was diagnosed with cancer. Well, that was about as fun as pissing out a kidney stone. And once again, Velma just goes to show the massive decline in Hollywood and in how bad a state they must be in if they thought that they could release this turd of a show to the public. Mindy Kaling and whoever the fuck else worked on the show should be beaten 
and senseless as subjecting people to this should be considered a form of torture and it wouldn't surprise me if the CIA used this on people in Guantanamo Bay. So yeah, those two steaming piles of shit were episode 7 and 8 of Velma. There's only one more week of this fucking nightmare to go before it fades into obscurity, exactly like She-Hulk did.